Good morning, everybody, and welcome to chapel. It's good to have you with us. Today we are talking about another practice that can help us draw closer to God and closer to people, and that is worship. Now, every week we start off our chapel with a song, and that is one way that we can worship God, through music, through singing. Uh, but it's not the only way. It might be a very familiar way for you if you go to church and you, you sing songs every Sunday, um, but uh, it's not the only way to worship God. So we're going to talk about that, but for now, let's worship God uh, through singing together. So let's, let's sing. Savior of the world was fallen. His body on the cross, His blood poured out the us, the weight of every curse upon Him. Son of God was laid in darkness, a battle in the grave, the war on death was waged, the power of hell forever broken. The ground began to shake, the stone was rolled away, his perfect love could not Welcome back. Um, 
Again, singing like we did just now is a great way that we can worship God, that we can give Him praise and worship Him for who He is, for what He's done uh, for us. But it's not the only way that we can worship God. So we're going to talk about, remember, four things. What does the Bible say about this? How does it draw us closer to God? How does it draw us closer to people? And what can we do in our lives to put this into practice? What does the Bible say? It says a lot about worship. I'm just bringing here a few scriptures on worship. This one is about our posture in worship. Maybe think about our posture. If you don't know what posture is, that's just kind of like how we, um, how we position our bodies or our hearts, okay, our posture. In Psalm 95, verse 6, it says, Come, let us bow down in worship. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker. So perhaps we bow in worship. Perhaps we kneel when we worship, right? Uh, I don't think many of us just kneeled uh, just a few minutes ago when we were singing a song, right? We were, we were maybe singing or, or watching and kind of singing along, worshiping in our, in our head or in our hearts, but we weren't kneeling down. But this says, hey, bow down. Let us kneel before God. Um, we can worship through song like we just did. In Psalm 100, verse 2, it says, Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before Him with joyful songs. This is, again, probably one of the most familiar ways that you and I know uh, of worship is, is singing. And it's something that is very familiar to us in our culture. It is one of the primary ways that we worship God is through song. Um, finally, in Romans 12, verse 1, this talks about worshiping God not through song, not through posture like kneeling down, but just with our life in general. I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God, because this is your true and proper worship. So worship is more than just songs. Worship can be in everything that we do. In this verse in Romans, it doesn't talk about singing. It doesn't talk about bowing or kneeling. It talks about presenting your whole life as a sacrifice that is pleasing to God. And when you do that, that is true and proper worship. But I think we see worship as something that is through music and through song because for all of humanity, I find this very interesting, for as long as we go back in the Bible, there has been song and there has been music tied in with worshiping God. So way back thousands and thousands of years ago in the Old Testament, David, when he wrote some of the Psalms, he talked about using music and, and using song to worship God. Um, then in the New Testament, as the early church was formed, the, they, they worshiped through song. They gathered, they had teaching, they had song. And even now, 2,000 years later, we still put that into practice. So song is just a powerful, uh, way that we can worship God because music connects with our hearts and uh, it's just a fantastic way that we can express ourselves to God in worship. How does worship bring us closer to God? Well, just like prayer that we talked about uh, before, you know, that connects us to God in our relationship with God. Worship connects us to God because when we worship God, we are really humbling ourselves and saying, God, I know that I'm not the greatest. I know that you are the greatest and that you deserve all of the praise and the honor. And so I want to give that to you. I want to give up everything maybe I think about myself and I'm not the greatest. I want to give that to you and elevate you because you are the greatest. And so it puts us in kind of right relationship with God, acknowledging that he is great, that he is worthy of praise and we are, we are not. Um, and then, again, you don't have to sing and jump around um, in order to worship, right? We don't have to have big bands and, and loud music and, and a whole group of people all singing together to worship. You can do this quietly, alone, in your own heart. You can be sitting, whether it's out at the beach, just kind of 
quietly looking out and, and, and adoring God for His creation, or whether it's sitting quietly in your room and just thanking God for who He is and lifting Him up in praise and worship just in your own heart, that is just as much worship as when you see a big old band playing and thousands of people with their hands raised and singing. Those are both forms of worship. And it brings us closer to God because it builds that connection. It builds that relationship with Him. It puts Him in His proper place in our lives. How does it bring us closer to people? Well, when we worship together, when you gather perhaps at your church and you sing songs of praise and worship to God, that really builds the community around you. you now, yesterday, well, I'm recording this on Monday, so uh, for, for you, Tuesday, two days ago, um, on Sunday morning, I went and I led worship at a church that, out in Monterey. Now, this wasn't my church, but I have some friends who uh, play on the worship band there, and they invited me to come and lead worship. And this is, it was a really cool experience because people from different cities, people from different churches, we got together and we led worship for a congregation, a church that does a live stream. So people were all sitting in their houses watching church and they were watching us on stage, people from different churches and different communities uh, lead in worship. And that's a, really a beautiful thing because it brings together people from all walks of life. It brings together people from different churches and different backgrounds and different communities and it brings us together under the common goal of praising Jesus. And so when we worship together, it really, really builds community. It encourages us as individuals. Oftentimes I leave a church service on Sunday morning and I'm encouraged just because I'm around a bunch of people who are also lifting God up. It, it creates this common um, goal and it points our hearts in the common direction. So worship with people. Don't give that up. Worship with people. Uh, sing songs together because it's a great community builder. Finally, what can we do to practice this in our own lives? I want to encourage you to engage in worship, both with people and alone. Because, you know, it's easy to engage with people or, or maybe it's easy to go to a church service and stand there or sit there while other people are engaging. But while you're with people, engage, sing, and praise God and worship God as you sing your songs. Because again, it, it, it's unifying us, it's pointing our hearts in a direction that says God deserves all the glory, all the worship. And so when you're with people, sing. When you are alone, Take time to just be quiet and in your own heart, almost like a prayer, lift God up. God, uh, you are so great. Thank you for all you've done. You are worthy of all the glory in my life, so let my life and everything I do glorify you. Worship Him just in your own heart. And finally, going back to this scripture in Romans that talked about our whole lives being worship and that being your, our whole lives being a living sacrifice and that being your true form of worship. You know, in everything that we do throughout our day, uh, it can be worship to God. There's a verse in the Bible that talks about um, in all your work and all that you do, do it as unto the Lord. And what it's saying there is work as if you were doing this for God. It might not have nothing to do, to do with church. It might have nothing to do with anything spiritual. It might be your job. It might be your homework. It might be your chores. Do it as if you were doing it for God. And when you do that, you would want to do that with excellence, right? If you're doing something for the creator of the universe, you would want to do that with excellence. And so do that. And when it is done with excellence, that in and of itself is worship to God because you are being the best worker, the best person that you can be in your community. And remember, God's kingdom is all around us. He wants His kingdom built here through community, through this, this, the Holy Spirit working among His people, who are you and me. And so 
everything that we do when we do it with excellence is glorifying to God. So think about that today. Think about uh, the, just the idea that worship is not just sung, even though we always sing and we always do that, and that's a great way to worship God. Worship is not just song. Worship is everything you do in your life. If it is done with excellence and if it is done with a heart that says, I want to, um, I want to do my best because God gave me his best and I want to give my best to the world and to the people around me. All right, that is it. Uh, I hope you have a great day. Go out there, uh, worship God, even if it's quietly in your own heart, and we'll see you very soon. All right, bye-bye.